July 13th to everyone. Uh, that survey is available at buildingabetteryorkcounty.org. Um, a couple of things we're looking to get from the survey. We want to identify priorities throughout all of York County communities. Um, find out what county services the residents are using, rate those county services, and prioritize those county services. Um, so that will be available from July 13th to August 13th. Um, so far, uh, it opened up to everyone on July 13th. We received over 600 responses that were fully filled out. There's a couple hundred that are still in progress. Um, the survey does take about 15 minutes, so please be patient. Take some time. There's a lot of information on there, but we would like to hear feedback from county residents. Uh, we'll also have a booth at the York Fair all week, um, partnering with the county. Uh, so if, if you're at the York Fair, come out and see us then. If you have any questions, you can go to buildingabetteryorkcounty.org. Um, and that was uh, generously funded through the Powder Mill Foundation. And I think you're in Memorial Hall at the fairgrounds, right? Yes. Yep. Um, any questions on that? Okay. Just uh, the second item is the announcement of the York County Open Space mm -hmm. and Land Preservation Grant Program is available and open to municipalities. Uh, nonprofits that support land preservation um, to receive funding to uh, for land acquisition or planning projects that will be open until September 30th. Uh, it's a matching grant, and that's available up to $100,000 for land acquisition and $25,000 for planning assistance projects. Uh, last year uh, was the initial year of the program, and the county was able to see over 3,000 acres preserved, um, natural areas, croplands. Um, and recreational opportunities for the county residents. So it's, it's been a great program we were hoping to get. We already did receive one application this far, so far this year. Looking forward to another great year. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think the county exceeded our goal last year. The goal was 2,500 acres and we did 3,000, correct? The goal is 2,500. We exceeded over, over 3,000 acres. Um, and that information on that is available at yorkopenspace.org. Um, and we'll be sending out information to municipalities as well. Great. Right. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Okay, we will move on to <clears throat> item number five on the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda, items A through G, as listed below. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number six. I'll make a motion to approve the following <laughs> letters of agreement between the County of York on behalf of the Adult Probation Department and the following agencies listed below to provide court reporting networks, driving under the influence education classes, and intervention treatment to driving under the influence clients for the period of July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2022, and there is listed on the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven. I make a motion to approve a contract agreement between the County of York on behalf of the Human Services Department and the York County Food Bank, York, Pennsylvania, for the distribution of federal commodities at a rate of 12 cents per pound for the period of March 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2022. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number eight. I make a motion to approve a contract agreement and HIPAA business associate agreement between the County of York on behalf of the Area Agency on Aging Department and the following agencies and service listed below at no cost to the county for the period of July 1st, 2021 and ending June 30th, 2022, and there is listed in the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number nine. I make a motion to approve the following contract agreements between the County of York and the Area Agency on Aging Department to serve as contract administrator and repository of the original signed contract for nine agency-funded senior community centers as listed below for the period of July 1st, 2021 to June 30, 2022. Sorry. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 10. I make a motion to approve the following contract agreements on behalf of the Area Agency on Aging Department and the below listed providers for the period of July 1st, 2021 to June 30, 2022. 
Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 11. I make a motion to approve a contract agreement between the County of York on behalf of the Human Services Department and Contact Helpline, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, to provide information and referral services via 211 to your county residents for a total cost of $34,820 for the period of July 1st, 2021 to June 30, 2022. Sorry. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 12. I make a motion to approve a contract agreement between the County of York on behalf of the Human Services Department and Mason Dixon Community Service, Services, Delta, Pennsylvania, to provide emergency shelter services to residents of the southern end of York County for a total cost of $5,000 for the period of July 1st, 2021 to June 30, 2022. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor <coughs> signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 13. I make a motion to approve a contract agreement between the County of York on behalf of the Human Services Department and YWCA of York, York, Pennsylvania, to provide transitional housing services to survivors of domestic violence for a total cost of $150,914 for the period of July 1st, 2021 to June 30, 2022. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'm number 14. I make a motion to approve a contract agreement between the County of York on behalf of the York County Youth Development Center and Adams County for the boarding of Adams County Youth at the York County Youth Development Center at a daily rate of $375.60 for the period of July 1st, 2021 through June 30, 2022. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 15. I make a motion to approve a contract between the County of York on behalf of the Department of Emergency Services and Patriot Communications of Elkton, Maryland, to provide maintenance services for the countywide public safety radio system for a five and a third year period beginning August 1st, 2021 until December 31st, 2026. And the cost of the county breakdown is in the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I don't know, Mark. I think we went out on bid for this. Yes, okay, good. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Aye. I have number 16. I'll make a motion to approve a revised agreement between the County of York and HRG, Inc., Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, for the preparation of two multimodal transportation fund applications for the Davies Drive extension in Springettsbury Township and the removal of the Pleasant Acres Road Bridge for a total cost of $12,800. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mark, I just wanted to clarify. Um, there will be a grant on behalf of the township and a grant on behalf of your county. Correct? Okay. All right. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 17. I make a motion to authorize the York County Planning Commission to work with HRG, the Cumberland County Planning Department, and the West Shore Historic Society to explore the details of an application to the 2021 Transportation Alternative Set-Aside Program. The application would seek funding to rehab the Sheepford Road Bridge over the Yellow Breaches Creek. An application would be presented to the boards at a future meeting for consideration. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 18. I make a motion to adopt resolution 2021-17 on behalf of the Community Development Department of the York County Planning Commission to approve the following changes to activities as approved under the 2019 and 2020 action plans as amended and funded by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, Washington, D.C., Community Development Block Grant Program, and there is listed in the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 19. I make a motion to adopt Resolution 2021-18, authorizing the submission of a multimodal transportation fund program grant application by the county in the amount of $379,500 
to the Commonwealth Financing Authority for the removal of the Pleasant Acres Road Bridge, which spans the Norfolk Southern Railroad. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 20. I make a motion to ratify Resolution 2021-19, designated the Cultural Alliance of York County as the United Arts Fund Local Arts Agency and service provider for the American Rescue Plan Act and authorizing them to act as the intermediary for the redistribution of grant funds to benefit York County art institutions and the cultural community. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? And I guess I know this came up, and, and Mark, as far as for the grant funding to be distributed to the arts, is this something we should be doing for this organization to distribute yes. them? Okay. Yes. It allows, it allows them to be a conduit to serve other right. uh, types of agencies. And so, Kelly Gibson, if you're watching, thank you for bringing this forward um, to the county commissioners. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 21. I make a motion to approve a resolution 2021-20, a retap abatement on Chestnut Street Block Build Phase 1 and Phase 2 project that consists of 10 row homes for the purpose of single family dwellings. Each unit has a current land value of $9,720, which will remain taxable. The abatement will be on the improved value at 100% year one, decreasing by 10% each year for 10 years. Year 11, each of the units will be fully taxable at the full assessed value, and the addresses are listed in the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? And I think for the public, I think. You may remember a couple years ago we had a fire and that almost the whole block burned down and uh, Habitat for Humanity came in and we are rebuilding the homes for people. So I think this is an excellent idea. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 22. Motion to approve the appointment of Evelyn Cruz, Fiscal Officer 3, Office of Children, Youth, and Families to the York County Human Services Fund Board of Directors for a term effective August 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2022. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 23. Motion to approve the submission of the Human Services Block Grant Plan on behalf of Human Services Department for fiscal year 2021-2022, which includes funding for services related to mental health intellectual and developmental disabilities, substance use disorders, homeless, near homeless, and low income, and includes a required York County match in the amount of $595,958. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 24. Motion to approve the following County of York policy and form on behalf of the Human Services Department. Human Resources Department, excuse me, effective July 1st, 2021, is listed below. I'll second the motion. A motion and a second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 25. Motion to approve a bid award between the County of York on behalf of York County Prison and Bimbo Bakeries USA, Inc., Albany, New York, the lowest responsible bidder for baked goods for the York County Prison in the amount of $166,000. $881 for the period of August 1st, 2021 to July 31st, 2022. Second motion. I have a motion and a second. Any <clears throat> discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. I'm number 26. Motion to approve a bid award between the County of York on behalf of York County Prison and Rudder's Dairy Incorporated, York, Pennsylvania, the lowest responsible bidder for dairy products for the York County Prison in the total amount of $454,000. $539.80 for the period of August 1st, 2021 to July 31st, 2022. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 27. Motion to approve a bid award between the County of York on behalf of the York County Prison and Satiris Mechanicsburg, PA, the lowest responsible bidder for a wireless survey and documentation for a total cost of $12,750. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 28. Motion to approve a bid award between the County of York on behalf of the York County Prison and McClure Company, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, the lowest responsible bidder to repair a leaking condensation pan 
for a total cost of eight thousand eight hundred seventy-three bucks. A second motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. I'm number twenty-nine. Motion to approve a bid award and contract agreement between the County of York on behalf of York County Prison and Montgomery Technology Systems, LLC, Greenville, Alabama, the lowest responsible bidder, for a three-year contract to do on-site service visits for door systems in the total amount of $58,800 for the period of August 1st, 2021 to August 1st, 2024. Second motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I'm number 30. Motion to approve a bid between the County of York on behalf of York County Prison and C.S. Davidson Incorporated, York, Pennsylvania, to conduct a feasibility study for the relocation of central booking for a total undetermined cost not to exceed $15,000. I'll second a motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'm number 31. Motion to approve an agricultural conservation easement purchase on behalf of the County of York acting through the Agricultural Land Preservation Board for the purchase of an agricultural conservation easement on a 220.964 acre beef farm owned by Stephen H. and Lynn M. Brown of Peach Bottom Township for the purchase price of $662,892 using remaining 2020 funds and beginning to use the 2021 County of York Conservation Easement Funding. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I have number 32. Motion to approve a purchase between the County of York on behalf of the York County Drug and Alcohol Department and Global Data Consultants Mechanicsburg PA for the purchase of 30 replacement laptops. 11 Dell docks, 30 monitors, one scanner, 13 keyboard and mouse combos, and 11 power strips at a cost of $48,724.62 paid from the drug and alcohol budget. I'll second a motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I just want to comment. Claire's obviously been, been very busy <laughs> in his new role as human services director. <laughs> Um, item number 33. Motion to approve the check register for the week of July 14th, 2021, totaling $5,570,244.04. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussions? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 34. Motion to approve the check register for the week of July 21st, 2021, totaling $8,745,000. $946.77. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, there were no executive sessions between our last meetings. Um, other business, Wade did already speak about the uh, county survey, buildingabetteryork.org. Um, uh, we would encourage all residents to participate in that. I think the commissioners have stated on multiple occasions how important it is for us to hear back from the community as we move forward with our strategic planning efforts. Um, I'm going to open it up for public comment, um, but before I do, I'm going to make a few comments. Um, we appreciate all those who have come today to speak regarding the request your county has received for a forensic election analysis and other related analyses. We ask that those who are planning to speak do so in a professional manner, indicating your name and your York County municipality. We know there is a lot of passion and emotion when it comes to elections, and we are asking you to be courteous to those speaking, even though you may have a different point of view. A public policy comment section states that we are to allow 30 minutes for public comment. But given the interest in this topic, the commissioners have agreed to extend the time frame to 60 minutes, giving first priority to those residents who live in your county. We also ask that everyone follow the guidelines that have been outlined for public comment. They were available at the door and they're also available at the podium. In order to permit maximum participation, we are limiting remarks to two minutes. Our solicitor, who's sitting to my right here, she will be timing you and she will alert you if you're speaking when you have approximately 15 seconds left. The public comment portion is designed exactly for that, for public comment. This is not a form whereby the commissioners will debate 
or we will not answer any specific questions. However, we may ask for clarification regarding your comments. Before we open the meeting to public comment, I would like to share some thoughts related to the 2020 general election and the request for a forensic election analysis. Counties must follow the election code and laws as defined by our Pennsylvania General Assembly. The process for mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania will put in place via passing the Act 77 legislation that was passed by the Pennsylvania General Assembly. The 2020 general election evidenced that changes are needed to be made to Act 77. We support the other 66 counties in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania who are asking for election law reform. We have received questions related to the security precautions taken related to our mail-in ballots. I'd like to share just some of the information of the things that we've done um, to ensure um, safety and security of our ballots. So during the 2020 general election, from our pre-canvassing to scanning to tabulation processes, all were conducted in an upfront and transparent manner. Activities were open to the press, they were open to political parties, they were open to candidates, they were open to representative of candidates and also elected officials. Ballots were transported by our sheriff's deputies and were secured throughout the process. We had one drop box located here in our administrative offices, which is also the location of our election office. They were supervised by county staff and sheriff's deputies, as well as being under camera surveillance. Ballots were stored in a locked fire suppression room that was also under camera surveillance. I've also been asked if mail-in ballots affected the outcome of the election in York County. The answer is that mail-in ballots did increase the total voter turnout in York County as compared to 2016. The Republican presidential candidate won York County in the 2016 general election by 62.39% over the Democratic candidate. In 2020, the Republican presidential candidate won York County in the general election by 61.52% over the Democrat candidate a less than a 1% difference between the general elections despite the uptick in registrations. In a county the size of your county, the results were not dramatically different between 2020 and 2016. Given the statewide 2020 presidential general election results, it seems that the York County 2016 versus the 2020 general election variants had a very limited impact on the 2020 statewide outcome. If there is a support for a forensic analysis at the state level, it seems that all counties should be included in that analysis. The York County Board of Commissioners has thoroughly and thoughtfully reviewed the request from Senator Mastriano for forensic analysis of the 2020 general election in York County and have replied to him with areas of concern seeking clarification. In particular, the concerns we are seeking clarification on are as follows. Which state Senate committee has jurisdiction over elections? What auditing firm is going to be doing the forensic investigation and are they a certified lab? Outlining the security protocols regarding chain of custody and who is paying for the audit. It is important to note that our voting machines are on the state approved list for certified vendors. If our 430 machines are decommissioned, like what happened in York County, the county will, I'm sorry, thank you, Ron, in Fulton County. The county will incur in excess of $2.7 million to replace them. This does not include the labor to get new machines in and validated, as well as ongoing maintenance and licensing fees. We have a fiscal responsibility to our taxpayers to be prudent when spending funds. And we also have a responsibility to ensure integrity of our elections. We are optimistic that Senator Mastriano will respond to our concerns in detail, and this will permit us to further consider his request. So at this time, I'm going to open the floor to public comment. Yeah, please go to the mic, state your name, your municipality, <coughs> and as I said, Michelle is going to um, okay. time you. Good morning, Commissioners. Hi, Alan. My name is uh, Alan Vander Sloot, A-L-A-N. V-A-N-D-E-R-S-L-O-O-T. I live in West York Borough, and a lifelong York Countyan. 
I want to just start by saying that uh, you've heard the phrase before that what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And I want you to understand something, that what happened in Arizona doesn't, did not stay in Arizona. It spread evidently to a couple states, including Pennsylvania. I want to mention a website that a lot of people are not aware of, but if they really want to get information about the audit processes in Pennsylvania, Georgia, uh, Arizona, and, other, and maybe a few other states, that it's notanaudit.com, N-O-T-A-N-A-U-D-I-T dot C-O-M. It's a great website. It gets into the real details of what happened. And uh, I feel that that website helps uh, educate a lot of people about the process. And I realize there's going to be a lot of speakers here that are not going to uh, agree with what I'm saying. But again, I'm an elected official also in a municipality, and we count on having fair and free elections. And in your county, we've had many, many elections. My wife and I have voted in every general election basically since 1970. We've always felt that every election was fair. The outcomes always did not please us personally. We did not vote for every winning candidate. But we never felt we had to ever feel that we had to challenge the results of a county's election uh, board or certification because of just personal agendas or misinformation. And I believe this that, that the audit request you're getting from the proponents of this is not really a forensic audit because, again, it should have gone to all 67 counties. Arizona evidently is not done yet. They've had months and months, and I've not seen anything. They were supposed to be done by May 30. Now, June 30th, they're still not revealing. I'll just say, I'll call it a sham audit, and I'll use the word sham just to make sure you understand the definition, that a sham is a thing that is not what it is purported to be. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'll let the other speakers come up here and, and challenge me on those things, but I believe the commissioners should not participate in the audit, and I thank you very much. If I could just pause one moment just to clarify, we do have an overflow room for those who are watching. You probably can't see it. I think you remember during COVID, uh, we also used our ceremonial courtroom. So we have county employees over there. And once the folks in this room have been given an opportunity to speak, uh, we have folks over there who want to speak and they'll be escorted to this room. So um, just wanted to clarify that for those sitting in this room. Okay, ma'am. Hi, my name is Mickey Pangburn, just like it sounds. I live in Windsor Township. And first of all, President Wheeler, I would like to thank you. I've been in this room many a times many years ago. I worked for Congressman Bill Goodling. I rem used to work in the pit when we did paper counts. That was difficult, but we did it and we managed and we got it right. As an American citizen, not a labeled Democrat or a Republican, as an American citizen, I am requesting for a full investigated audit forensically. Folks, listen, we know everybody is enthusiastic about this subject. The commissioners have allowed an hour, so if you could please refrain. Every time you clap and all of those things are eating up time. So I Ms. want to be Peck, respectful yeah. and give everyone an opportunity that wants to speak the, the opportunity to do so. So go she ahead, She was at Mickey. one minute and, at the time of the okay. response, so you have another one more minute. Another okay, minute, thank Mickey. you. Okay. I had witnessed when I worked with Bill Goodling um, an incident and Bill was a very kind and gentle man, where he actually told the person three words, get out now of his office. He looked at me then and he said, Mick, if it doesn't feel right in here, make your voice heard. It doesn't feel right when Pennsylvania's votes outweighed the number of registered voters. 
Thank you for your time. Again, please, we please ask you to be respectful of the people speaking. Um, go ahead, sir. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Bill Kearns, uh, here on behalf of East Hopewell Township, uh, also on behalf of AuditTheVotePA.com, uh, on behalf of the over 108,000 people that have signed this petition, I'm here to petition the York County Commissioners and Board to conduct an audit. Um, I believe in audit using the scientific method that is double blind. That is a recognized court fallible um, method of, of uh, producing expert testimony would be appropriate um, using a bipartisan group um, to address one of the board's concerns. Uh, using court recognized uh, scientific methods uh, I don't see how the voting machines could be construed to be tampered with. Um, beyond that, as a computer programmer with over 10 years experience in the field, I worked with big data and I can offer my testimony as an expert witness that there's numerous loopholes in how the previous audits have been conducted. So I'm petitioning the court to allow a bipartisan double blind scientific audit, forensic audit, of the voting machines. Thank you. I promise we will get to everyone. You can stay in your seats mm -hmm. until the previous. We thought we were next. Yeah. Mark Swamley, Chairman of the Board, Springersbury Township. Um, first, I want to say thank you for uh, approving the money to go for the grant funding for <laughs> Davies Drive. Much needed. It's going to help the county. It's going to help Springersbury, and I appreciate it. But the second topic is the one of the election forensic audit. Now, I appreciate uh, your words, Julie. Um, and commissioners, I, I recognize all of you to be rational, reasonable people. And I appreciate the, uh, the effort and, and forethought that you've put into your position. Um, I do have to say that um, even if your county is not the problem and will not change the election overall, there were numerous irregularities. And I think that the county has to put their voice behind supporting a forensic audit of the vote in Pennsylvania. That's right. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. We're going to do this in a very organized manner, okay? Um, so if you could just raise your hand if you want to speak, and I will go from left to right across the room, okay? So I think we'll just take you. You are sitting in the chair. Okay. Ma'am, ma'am, could you just hold on for a second? Absolutely. I just want to make sure I'm following the rules. So okay, of course. Um, I check with our solicitor, and the policy is you cannot yield your two minutes to another individual, but if there are a group of you that want to designate one person speak, we will allow that individual to have an extra amount of time. And I believe the solicitor has said that we would allot um, eight minutes. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You're Would, welcome so much. Before you start, we'd like to make sure that you've signed into the sign-in sheet. A yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank okay. you. No, 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 no. You can just, that, that's fine. No problem. So again, just um, state your name and your sure. municipality. Darla Thank Byerly, you. York Township. Good morning, commissioners, and thank you for your time. My name is Darla Byerly. I'm a resident of York County, and I'm here today to speak on behalf of myself, the people who've joined me, and countless others who unfortunately are unable to be here today because this meeting occurs during the working hours of many of the taxpayers you serve. 
The main reason for our turnout is related to the recent letter you received from Senator Doug Mastriano regarding a full forensic investigation of the November 20 and the May 21 elections. I'd like to first begin by fully acknowledging the Pennsylvania Constitution that declares that all men are born equally free and independent and have certain inherent and indefeasible rights, among which are those of enjoying and defending life and liberty, of acquiring, possessing, and protecting property and reputation, and of pursuing their own happiness. All power is inherent in the people, and all free governments are founded on the people's authority and instituted for the people's peace, safety, and happiness. For the advancement of these ends, the people have at all times an inalienable and indefeasible right to alter, reform, or abolish their governments in such manner as they may think proper. The people have a right in a peaceable manner to assemble together for the common good and to apply those invested with the powers of government for redress of grievances and of other purposes by petition, address, or remonstrance. Please take notice that the only reason the people have the power to remonstrate is because the government is created to carry out their will. When the government is not functioning according to the will of the people, the people are to correct their behavior and to lead them back to the Constitution and to have them redress the grievances of the people. And so I'm here today to make it known that as one of the people, I am in support of a full forensic audit in York County. I and countless other fe fellow Pennsylvanians have personally spoken with Senator Mastriano on numerous occasions, and his letter to you is in response to we the people who hold all political power and who've instructed him regarding our deep concerns of the November 20 and May 21 election. Senator Mastriano and all his colleagues in the Senate have received affidavits and countless notices from We the People demanding a full forensic audit using the Arizona audit as a template for moving forward in Pennsylvania. We the people have all political power and we have the right to scrutinize our elections because we are the electors and the election belongs to We the People. If you're not aware, there is a massive groundswell of discontent among the people of Pennsylvania and across the entire nation. This is clearly evidenced by the petition circulating throughout the Commonwealth demanding a full forensic audit. This petition was started in February 2021 by three moms in Pittsburgh. In less than six months, this grassroots organization known as Audit the Vote PA has collected over 110,000 signatures and we're not stopping until we get a full forensic audit in Pennsylvania. As a volunteer for the Audit of OPA, I've personally spoken with and collected over 500 signatures from Pennsylvania residents who are beyond frustrated. Emotions range from complete homeless, hopelessness in our electoral system, feelings of betrayal by our elected officials, and outright anger over what happened during these elections. So many people have lost all trust that our elections are free and fair. Everywhere I go, people have thanked me for providing them the opportunity to sign the petition and have their voices heard. I cannot express, express deeply enough that the people demand a full forensic audit of these elections. The Audit the Vote PA team has amassed an immense amount of data and facts concerning irregularities and fraud in our state, and here are a few specific to York County. The 3,879 voters backfilled into the shore system, 845 duplicate registrations, 39,625 first-time voters, 2,106 inactive voters, 245 mail-in ballots were recorded but do not have any voter ID in the shore system, Two, 330 mail-in ballots counted that were received after November 3rd, 234 mail-in ballots recorded that were sent out of state, 1,134 registrations removed from the voter rolls between the week of the election and February 1st, 2021. I have my own personal story. My husband and I worked at the Mount Zion United Church of Christ polling place during the May 18th primary, and we were disgusted to learn that they ran out of Republican ballots in the early afternoon. This polling place has a two to one Republican to Democrat ratio, and they received a 50-50 ratio of Republican to Democrat ballots. Is it any surprise that they ran out? These Republican voters had to wait 45 minutes to an hour to vote. Voters in other larger precincts nearby were told that they could expect a two hour wait, and some refused or were simply unable to wait. This same failure happened all over York County, and it's completely unacceptable to the voters and candidates who ran in these elections. This is real voter suppression, and I'd like to know who is being held accountable. It's not hard to understand why we the people do not trust the system or the outcome, and we demand a full forensic audit. We've been told there is no fraud. We've been told our machines are not connected to the internet. We've been told there is no phantom voters. I say, prove it and show us the receipts. We demand the truth, and we demand a full forensic audit. I'm utterly disgusted that the governor and his unconfirmed Secretary of State alongside Dominion Voting Systems are threatening counties that they will decertify the people's machines if an independent third-party auditor investigates our machines. 
isn't that rich. They sold us a bill of goods claiming that their machines are fully conducive to audits, and now they're saying that a full forensic audit would be a violation of the state guidelines and the contract with Dominion Voting Systems. Here's the bottom line. Governor Wolf, the State Department, and Dominion don't get to call the shots. The legislature has full plenary power to investigate the specifics and details of our elections, including county boards of elections. It's the legislature, by the instruction of the people, that gets to authorize the auditors, and we're not interested in a risk-limiting 45,000 ballot sampling audit. We will only be satisfied with a full forensic audit, similar to what's been done in Arizona. We the people have the right to scrutinize our elections because the elections belong to we the people. I hope you can sense my passion for our elections. My husband spent eight years in the United States Marine Corps. He swore an oath to defend this nation against threats both foreign and domestic. I'm standing with him and all my fellow patriots to defend our sacred nation against this domestic threat. If we the people cannot trust our system, what's the point of participating in it? I'm asking this question of you because the people have asked it of me. Our elections are a most precious part of our constitutional republic, and they must be held to the highest standard. Without our free and fair election, we as a people are doomed to tyranny. Commissioners, you have a decision to make, and this is your opportunity to get on the right side of history. Our senator has asked you to comply with the will of the people. Will you cooperate? Will you comply, with the, with the issue, will you, will you comply and issue a full forensic audit? We the people are watching, and we know who's for us, and we know who's against us. I can assure you of one thing. One way or another, audits are coming. We the people will never stop. We've been going since November 3rd, 2020. And we will continue to hammer away at this no matter what it takes. This is our country, and our vote is the most precious right of a free people. Our 56 founding fathers knew full well that they risked their very lives by signing the Declaration of Independence from the tyrannical British crown. Byer, they mutually pledged their very lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. They made the brave choice, and we, their posterity, have enjoyed the blessings of liberty ever since. This is your opportunity to make the brave choice, to stand for the will of the people and issue a full forensic audit in York County. This is your opportunity to make the right choice, to begin the process of reforming our elections and restoring faith in the integrity of our republic. We the people have spoken. I would ask you to please, please, folks, Please refrain yourself. We will. This is serious. Please, folks, again, we want to give everyone an opportunity to speak. And every time you guys pause and clap, love your passion, love your passion. But it eats time into the 60 minutes that we've allotted. So if the next, per if the next person could please raise their hand who would like to speak. OK, thank you. Kimberly Jean Davis, Lower Chancery Township, and this is going to be anticlimactic after that wonderful lady's speech. Um, I have a technical complaint. Um, being a perennial Girl Scout, I came prepared. I brought my own ballpoint pen, which I was not allowed to use. I was forced to use a Sharpie. Now, I've done a little bit of homework on this. The printers can provide ballots with thick enough paper that the Sharpie does not bleed through. But they didn't do that. It bled through. I saw it with my own two eyes. And when that happens, the machine can't read it properly. It gets side kicked over to the side, red flagged. And they call it adjudication. Somebody guesses at what I wanted. And that makes me unhappy because I just got through saying what exactly what I wanted. I don't want somebody guessing at it. So that's really a small problem that can be easily fixed. And as far as financing goes, there is such a thing which I'm sure you've heard of, uh, the public-private partnership. Um, Patrick Byrne has got the American Project along with uh, General Flynn. I've sent money to them. They are happy. They've given $3 million to the Arizona audit, OK? So you don't have to worry about coming up with the money all by your little old cells. You know, this public-private partnership thing is, is an option. And that's all. That's it. If I could ask the next person to raise their hand. Hi, Janice. Do you want to come up?
I'm sorry, everybody. I'm here for a totally different reason. I'll only take one second. Um, Janice Links, Executive Director, West Shore Historical Society. <clears throat> On behalf of the West Shore Historical Society, I would like to thank the commissioners for the approval of the motion to seek funding for the Sheepford Road Bridge through PennDOT's TASA program. Though this is just the beginning of a long process, the West Shore Historical Society appreciates this opportunity for the society and for the bridge. Um, we will do all we can to ensure success of the project and the society remains committed advocates of the Sheepford Road Bridge, as do I, and I can't tell you how much I really personally appreciate this. Thank you. You're Sorry. welcome, Janice. Okay, do we have... Sorry, anyone else would like to come? I'm sorry, my thing was muted, I apologize. Um, uh, this young lady in the back with the glasses? Yeah, here, yeah. If I knew your name, I would call you by name. I just know Janice because she visits us. <laughs> Good morning, my name's Melissa Eiler. I'm from Fawn Township. Um, I was a poll worker on May 18th. Um, and just wanted to express my deep concern um, over the ballot situation, as Ms. Byerly, I believe her name was, also um, spoke about. Um, we, uh, you know, counted our ballots in the morning and realized that we are probably going to run out. So we, um, our election judge called up to the office, said, can we please have some more ballots? It was about... I want to say six, seven o'clock before we received more ballots. We did run out um, hours before. Um, people were turned away. Um, people were upset because we said, you know, we're waiting. Do you want to wait? Of course, people don't want to wait. Um, those that did waited in line for almost two hours. So um, I'd like to know, you know, why there weren't enough ballots, why, you know, when we called in plenty of time and had to wait, you know, about six hours. Um, for more ballots. So I think, you know, the voters in Fawn Township are owed an explanation for that. Um, we were able to get our ADA machine up and running. Um, that took a long time for each vote. Um, so, you know, hence the people waiting in line for hours. Um, but they were committed to wait in line, but it just was very unnecessary. And I, I did call Kristen Phillips Hill's office and ask um, for an explanation. I have not heard anything since um, I called the day after the election. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, I, I would like some answers for that because, like I said, I've, I've been a poll worker for um, several elections. I'm going to I'm the majority um, going to be on the ballot for the majority inspector position. Um, so I'd, I would not um, like to go through that again. So I think we're owed some explanation. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, I think there was I think there was a lady. Yeah, over here next. Good morning, my name is Maria Swamley from Springersbury Township. My husband was already up here. Um, in be after the election, my husband and I reached out to as many people as we possibly could up in Harrisburg so that we could have avoided some of what's taken place right now. And I'm a little bit more passionate than he is about my voting. I mean, not about my voting, but about my vote. And I feel that the people that we have voted for are not listening to us. And I feel that they don't deserve to be in the positions that they're in to be our leaders because they're not listening to what we had asked them to do. He spoke to several senators and congressmen of the state of Pennsylvania and they sounded like they didn't want to do anything and leave status quo. And that is a bad thing, not just for our state, but for our country. That's right. My father fought in World War II, earned a purple art. Freedom is important to our family. Um, the gentleman in the gray shirt. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm, uh, my name is Douglas George. I live in Spring Garden Township. I've lived in Spring Garden Township with great pleasure for many decades now. Um, 
when my wife and I Sir, were going Sir, could you just wait a sec? I just want to give you, uh, please silence your phones and be courteous of the folks that are taking the time to speak. So if you could please just take a moment and put your phone on vibrate or silence, I would really appreciate it. Um, so if we could start his clock over, Michelle. Okay. Um, thank you. I, um, when we were going to vote in November, our uh, polling place was changed less than a week before the election. Uh, that was in the western part of Spring Garden Township. I don't necessarily read ulterior motives into that, but we were scrambling. It was everything we could do to get out the word, to let people know that we were going to vote at a new location. We uh, printed up flyers, we had signs made, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> It just so happens that our uh, precinct, I believe it is, or ward, is, um, has more Republican, registr registered Republicans than Democrats or Independents. Um, we just heard a comment about running out of ballots uh, this May election in one voting location in York Township, or the lady in Spring Grove who talked about the problems with ballots. So uh, the audit aside, I want you folks to all know that the Director of Elections for York County works for you and he works for us. You had a Director of Elections that, was, that resigned because they were incompetent. This Director of Elections does not seem up to the job either. And so I highly recommend you that you acknowledge your responsibility for competently run elections in your county. Because we can debate this audit thing all we want, but what happened in November was bad. That it continued in May is not good. And it will, be, will not be tolerated by more than just the people in this room. So that director of, your, that director of elections serves at your pleasure. You had the previous director of elections resign or she was fired, I can't remember. So I just say to you, please pay attention. Please pay attention. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, could, um, Hi, my name is Jessica Wood. I am from uh, Jacobus Borough, and I am here today. Uh, you would have received correspondence from me last night, but I'm here just to make it public record for everybody that's sitting here today. I want to thank you for sending uh, a copy of Senator Mastriano's, uh, the letter that you had sent to Senator Mastriano to me. I had a chance to review it. And the first item that I would like to address um, in the letter addressed to Senator Mastriano is um, whether or not he has jurisdiction to intercede um, with the forensic investigation. Um, so under Title 25, Chapter 16, Section 1601, it is within Senator Mastriano's purview as chair of his committee to subpoena investigation as it explicitly states that a subpoena may be issued upon the motion of a commission. Restrictions to a specific committee are not provided, but rather a or any committee has the authority to subpoena. In fact, the Mason's Manual of Legislative Procedure, whereby the legislator is governed according to Rule 26 of Rules of the Senate of Pennsylvania states in Chapter 73, Section 795, that the right of the legislative body to make investigations in order to assist in the preparation of wise and timely laws must exist as an indispensable incident and auxiliary to the proper exercise of legislative power. Furthermore, it states that the legislator has the power to investigate any subject regarding which it may desire information in connection with the proper discharge of its function to enact, amend, or repeal statutes or to perform any other act delegated to it by the Constitution. The board's request for election reform law as a stipulation for cooperation with an investigation which both the House and Senate had passed with House Bill 1300 and then was later vetoed by Governor Wolf is contradictory to the rules that the legislator is governed by. Contained 
within is their right to investigate the election in order to create, amend, or repeal said statutes, meaning they have full authority to investigate before any legislation is enabled or altered. While election reform should remain a top priority, it is not necessary for an investigation. Article 1, Section 4, Clause 1 of the U.S. Constitution, otherwise known as the Election Clause, states that the times, places, and manner shall be prescribed in each state by the legislator thereof. While the state secretary may help oversee certification of election equipment by the authority granted by the legislator, all manner regarding conducting elections is ultimately up to the legislator themselves. Ms. The Wood, you're at your two minutes. Okay. I have a group I, that will give them their time. That's right. Yeah. Um, the Secretary of State acting or otherwise as a member of the executive branch of government and does not have the authority to override the legislator and demand replacement of election equipment. The board also stated a concern for who would be conducting an audit as there are currently only two audit teams approved by the state. Your time is up. We have a group. No, that you, with all due respect, um, you need to do that ahead of time. That was not made clear. No. Yeah. So. Yes. This is, she's giving you law. This is the law, please. Sir, I'm going to defer to my solicitor who's instructed me. Again, if there's someone else from your group that collectively wants to speak, I'm, that, that is fine. But um, your time is up. So hold on, hold on. Was, I, I ask if folks would raise their hand if they would like to speak. So I, OK. Okay. Okay. Good morning. My name is Kim George, Spring Garden Township. The board also stated a concern for who would be conducting an audit, as there are currently only two audit teams approved by the state. I would again state that the legislature has full authority to assign an auditor of their choosing outside of the state's or board's of commission's approval. And I trust that Senator Mastriano and his committee will take the necessary steps required by them. To address the board's concern for proper staffing, the Maricopa County audit was conducted predominantly by volunteers within the, their respective county. While I cannot speak for Senator Mastriano, I would assume that the investigation would be conducted in a similar manner to be mostly run by a bipartisan volunteer group of York County voters. In the letter addressed to me, the board called into question Dr. Douglas Frank's qualifications, but failed to address Captain Seth Keschel and his data provided at the same meeting. Captain Keschel, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, is a former military intelligence data and analyst, making him more than qualified to speak on such matters. He has done extensive voter trend work extending beyond the 2020 presidential election, of which the data is irrefutable and is more than sufficient to warrant an investigation. As of today, I have required additional data that roughly 4,000 first-time voters voted in the 2020 presidential election, an exceptionally high number, and 1,692 duplicate registrations were found contained with the voter rolls. I would also state that a risk-limiting audit is not a forensic audit and cannot capture fully the integrity of the voting process. A forensic investigation is necessary to confirm whether the 2020 presidential election and 2021 primary election results were accurate. Given the board's hesitancy to grant an investigation at the taxpayer's expense, I gather that you had previously not garnered enough support from your constituents to warrant an investigation. I expect that the last 24 hours has changed that quite a bit, and that the board has now received more than enough support to convince you that investigation is not only requested by our legislature, but demanded by the majority of your county residents. As such, I would like to remind you of the duties sworn to you by we the people. Article 3, Section 302 states that the board must conduct elections honestly, efficiently, and uniformly. While there are a number of issues in violation of this obligation, I would point out that our 2021 primary was not conducted efficiently with the lack of Republican ballots in most precincts, precincts and they were not uniformly conducted due to the discrepancies between in-person voting and mail-in voting. Ms. The George, you're at your two-minute limit. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. George, I did just have one clarifying question. On the data that you shared, uh, is that um, applicable to York County or all of Pennsylvania, just so we know? Just York County. Thank you. Okay, the next person could raise your hand. Would anybody like to finish? Yes, sir. Yes, Go right ahead. Uh, I'll finish. I'll finish for her. Why are we out? 
My name is Ruben Hilliard. I'm from uh, Central. Uh, the board is also obligated under Section 302 to investigate election fraud, irreg irregularities, and violations, and to report all suspicious circumstances to the district attorney. While not all irregularities require reporting, according to my conversation with Dave Sunday, there is are discrepancies which have not been addressed with him that should be and will be addressed with him you should you choose not to pursue them any further please pursue them further has the board responded to the representative Ryan and representatives Kiefer requests for reconciliation yet no you haven't article Sir, I want to clarify four. that we have responded to representative Kiefer Okay, I did not see that one. Thank you. I will look at it. Article 4, Section 403 requires the board to subscribe to an oath of offices as provided uh, 53 PA CS Section 1141 and provides that you all support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth. Opposition to a forensic investigation requests by the taxpayers of York County puts you in the direct violation of your sworn oath of duty, of your sworn oath of duty. Article 1, Section 2 of the PA Constitution states that all power inherent in the people and all free governments are founded on their authority. Article 1, Section 5 states that elections shall be free and equal and no power, civil or military, shall at any time interfere, prevent the free exercise of the rights of suffrage. There is mounting evidence, mounting evidence, mounting evidence that fraudulent activities have occurred in the York County, thereby negating residents' votes and preventing our rights to, to suffrage. You were elected and entrusted. You were elected and entrusted to serve we, the people. Negligence on your behalf to follow through with the investigation will result further action by we, the people. Should you choose to disregard additional requests for an investigation at, tomorrow, at today's board meeting, you will each be served an affidavit, an affidavit of uh, maladministration. Thank you for your consideration, and I look forward to speaking with you. The, at the board meeting tomorrow. This was from Jessica Wood. Again, I am Reuben Hilliard. I am a pastor here in York County, and I am really upset and uh, hurt Hilliard, that we are the people. Time okay, limit. we the people you could just have had seen a lot of negligence, sure. a lot you of could negligence, just state your and we just. Municipality pastor. What's that? Record, your municipality you're from? You said central. You said central. I'm you from Central School District. I live in Central School District. Do you know what municipality you're in? Spring and Sperry's Township. Great. Thank you. So. Just, we, we, we're praying for you. You guys have a hard, difficult job. We support free, truthful, transparent elections. Whatever took place, we need to get to the bottom of it. And the people just need to be able to have understanding that this is going to be a free process that we can trust in. Third world countries have more strict regulations. Third world countries. I've been to all over the world, traveled all over the world. Impoverished cities, people destitute, much more poor than us, have stricter guidelines have better elections than what we have had. This Mr. is Hilliard, really heartbreaking well and dis dis disgusting. Thank you for your time. We are praying for you. So we, have, we are praying um, for you because it's a difficult job that you have. It is, but please stand up for what have, is right. Um, there's about 25 minutes left of our hour. So are there additional um, individuals here that would like to speak? Okay, I'm going to, the gentleman in the beige shirt, yes. And then I saw there was a lady, be, I saw you. You can go next. Good morning, Tony Camaro, York Township. Uh, just want to reiterate, uh, in the May primaries, I had the same problem. Had the uh, Sharpies bleed through the back of the paper. Did not, they ran out of uh, ballots, Republican ballots. Luckily, I was like the second one, so I only had to wait like 15 minutes, but there was a line of people out the door just waiting. That should not happen in this county, this day, this age. Okay, <clears throat> you need to get a little more on board here. You need to start, uh, you need to go through this forensic process because the integrity, because it's just that people need this trust, okay? 
that people need to trust. I know a lot of people that don't want to vote anymore, and you're taking that's being taken away because they don't trust. This forensic audit will bring back trust. It doesn't matter what the outcome is. It's just the audit. It's bringing back the trust to the people, we the people. Thank you. Okay, the young lady in the black shirt. Hi, my name is Danielle Lindemuth, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to speak even though I am not currently a resident of well, York County. We do want County. to give priority to the York County residents, so if you could just let me check to see if anyone else here from York would like to speak, I really do want to make sure they get Absolutely. an opportunity to. So um, if you're short, please make sure you put your hand up high so I can see it. Yes, ma'am? You're from York? Yes, okay, am. yeah, I'll let you... you Thank you for your patience. I just want to make sure, sure we give absolutely. the York County Nope, residents. there's an order to things. I okay. appreciate that. We didn't let her know. Uh, good morning. Thank you, commissioners and distinguished panel, for your time. My name is Kimberly Stauffer. I reside in York Township. Um, I'm here before you in support of everything you've heard, as well as to let you know at a prior commissioner meeting, after the meeting adjourned, there was a group that were in a restaurant that happened to be speaking with Ron Smith. Uh, although I wasn't there, I was told firsthand, there was a discussion about Stephen Ulrich. It was questioned as to... Uh, why Stephen Ulrich, who was on the board, or I beg your pardon, who is the, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know his exact position, but he's judge of elections or something of that, of that nature, um, was still in uh, overseeing the election process in York County when so many people are very distraught and very disconcerted about what's happening. Um, it was conveyed to me that Mr. Smith said it would be very hard to find someone to fill that job because people don't go to college to be directors of election. Additionally, Joe Gothy wrote a letter to the commissioners, to you all, in January of 2020 saying uh, choosing Steve Ulrich as the director of elections was a mistake. I wish you to consider this. We the people are going to keep our eye and ear on this. We are asking for a judge of elections in York County that is honest, forthright, and transparent. Thank you. Okay. I just, um, anyone else from York County want to speak? If you change your mind after the lady speaks, well, certainly we still have time left in our hour. So um, you have the podium, ma'am. Hi, thank you. Again, uh, yeah, my name is Danielle Lindemuth, and I am from Mountjoy Township in Lancaster County. I am coming to you as a school board candidate, and I am someone that is very invested in the elections. Um, I was appalled at the way the election was handled in November, and I was appalled even further when I saw the elections and the way they were handled um, in May. As someone who has a concerted interest in how the elections are done and making sure that they are done correctly and um, forthrightly, I don't don't want to become a um, school board candidate, uh, school board person, if I'm not there because the people didn't vote me in. That's my goal is to be on there because I have been voted in and vo voted in correctly. But I can't know that if I've been voted in correctly if it's not done properly, if it's not done ethically, if it's not done the way it is intended to be done. And for us not to be willing to um, audit the vote that happened in November and to see all the irregularities. And I remember election day hearing about the ballots that were missing in 
um, in this county here. And I was waiting for them to tell me that that was happening in my county and that it happened to Republicans only. It was never the Democrats that were receiving that same treatment. I was appalled at what the treatment was happening and how it was happening. And I was just shocked that it wasn't a bigger news item than what it was. And there seems to be a problem with that. I'm also a former banker. And as the um, manager at a bank, if somebody came to me and said, I am missing this much money. Your teller didn't give me this much money. And then I went to that teller and said, well, did you do that? Oh, yeah, I did. And I didn't do a full forensic audit of their till to prove to that person that they really did not receive the money they weren't supposed to receive or that they did receive the money they were supposed to receive. I would be negligent in what I'm doing. And so we are asking you as commissioners to please do the job of requesting and requiring the audit of the vote. And as people have said previously, if you need people to do it, I know that there are a ton of people who are willing and ready to become volunteers to help audit the vote. We want to see this happen, but we're not the ones that are going to say, you do it, you do it, you do it. We're saying, allow it to happen, and we're going to stand beside you, we're going to stand behind you, and we're going to stand right next to you, and we're going to ask you to please audit that vote, and we'll do it with you if that's what it takes. And if you're, we are also asking that if you are not going to um, make the decision to audit the vote today, that we do have some subpoenas that we would like to hand to you so that we can make sure that that does happen. So thank you. Okay, so um, I, the gentleman in the back was first, so I've been trying to. And uh, we're down to about maybe 15 or so minutes, so. Good morning, I'll be brief. Sure. Uh, my name is Judson Spangler. I'm a native of York County. Uh, I currently live in Millersville right now. Uh, but uh, I'm here because my, ha my family helped found York County. Uh, they helped settle it. Uh, and uh, they fought and died uh, for this country, uh, including the, the American Revolution. Uh, when I learned what my family had done in the Revolution, uh, I, I was awakened politically, I think, in a way I haven't been before. So uh, ordinarily, I probably wouldn't even be at a, at a county commissioner meeting, but I am on, on behalf of my forefathers and, and foremothers. Um, we've lived in a year of a lot of lack of transparency coming from government particularly at the state level, and I'm asking you as Pennsylvanians to break that pattern of obfuscation and lack of transparency. And uh, whether or not, you know, York had significant problems, that we should just know. And if you become part of the overall audit and we build some support for a, a statewide audit, maybe we'll have confidence in our elections again, because right now we do not. If, and I want to call your attention to one one thing that was so frustrating on the, in the November 2020 election, we all woke up the next day with a lot of questions. Maybe Biden won, maybe Trump won, but we had questions, and we couldn't get our questions answered from the state legislature because they weren't in session and couldn't be called into session except by the governor. Well, what do you think is going to happen at the state level with our, or the people who we've elected to represent us to look into the election? We have to wait until several months, until probably th things are too late. So I, I, it's, I respectfully ask that you just hear us on this, please. Thank you. Um, okay. Was there? Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Francine, and I am from Spring Township um, in West Lawn. Um, What's your last name, ma'am? Cal Califati. We the people of PA, and I did send this by, via email, but I'd also like to make it public record. Um, we, the people of Pennsylvania, were demanding a full forensic investigation of our 2020 presidential election. We will not accept your choice of forensic investigators. We have seen the overwhelming fraud that occurred, which is available everywhere. Should you continue on this path of attempted destruction of our freedoms, our voice and rights, along with the crimes against humanity, you are engaging, you are engaged in per perpetrating on us. You will be held accountable. If you are complicit in this fraud and crimes against us by interfering with our simple demand, 
to do your jobs by investigating this fraud, which is your reasonable service and our right. You are perpetrating medical fraud on PA sovereigns and our children for which you will be held accountable. You will be held liable legally. Please don't be the enemy of, our, of the people. You must either admit to your fraud or vacate our offices. You are no longer needed if you continue to stand in the way of letting us see the results. Humble yourselves and ask for help. You can turn away from um, these sins. Just accept your need and, and you'll be helped. Thank you. Okay, just. Okay. Hello, my name is Rosemary Weeder, and I live in Chansford Township. And uh, I'm not eloquent. Uh, all I can say is I voted since I was 18 in every election, and I'm now 70. And this is the first election, and I've voted in many elections where who I wanted to vote for did not win, and I never felt that my vote didn't make a difference where this is the first election. I feel that way. And I am not alone. I have to tell you, my husband and I were having breakfast at a little uh, uh, breakfast restaurant. And I don't say anything. I'm usually quiet. Um, but this man started talking about the election. And he was saying that there was fraud. And everybody everybody in that whole entire restaurant, uh, quiet people and people that were more boisterous, all agreed. They all said there was fraud. And I know that if this is not addressed and we do not have a forensic audit, we will never feel that our freedom uh, is there for us again. That's it. <laughs> And you did just fine. <laughs> um, OK, I just want to make sure, is there anyone else maybe hiding in the back that we can't see? And Felicia, has everybody been moved from the room? OK, just so there's anyone over there. OK, I'm just going to pause again, because I want to make sure everyone that he, you um, you could after the meeting, because we have, um, after this meeting, we have salary board and retirement board, but we open with the invocation. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. What? Okay. All right. So, well, we're, we will let you, but I, ma'am, did you want to speak? Well, I want to allow everyone that wants to make a public comment to have an opportunity. So if you would like to make a public comment, please, please do so. Hi, my name is Kim Schumann, and I live in Monaghan Township. And I just wanted to say quickly, I really wasn't expecting to get up here and say anything. I just found out about this meeting at like 10 o'clock last night, so I'm not super prepared. But I do, I do really strongly feel that um, our freedom is what's at stake here. This is a big part of our freedom. Because this election was something that there's a lot of other higher-ups that don't have our freedom in mind. They have control and power in mind. And the things that went on with this election were part of it. And so for us to maintain our freedom, I think we have to stand up. We have to get this right, or our country's not going to continue to be a free country. And I think that's really at the heart a lot of, of a lot of the passion, is that it's not people that have our best interest at heart that did this. It's people that want to control us and want us to turn it, us into a country that is not of the people, by the people, for the people, that is controlled by people in other parts of the world that... Um, have no desire for the United States to be a sovereign, independent nation any longer. They have evil intent for us. And so, um, again, 
people fought and died so we would have the freedom that we have. And I'm not even sure how many of the people in office today have ever read our Constitution. It's not really that long. And I don't know if they've read it, if they studied it, if they're really trying to follow it. I think there's more people that are intending to make a new Constitution and a new America based on something else. And when America ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. One of our founding forefathers said that. And I, I just think when they're evil, or maybe they're not evil, maybe they just aren't with it, with let's get to the Constitution and follow this and uphold this. So I guess that's really all I wanted to say is I think our freedom is at stake if we don't know that our voices are getting in there and um, the people we vote for in there, then our freedom has been stripped of us. So thank you very much for these moments. Oh, yes, sir. Julie. If you could state that at the mic, sir, that'd be great. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. Thank you for your time. My name is Ben Knapp, resident of Windsor Township. I'm not going to be nearly as brilliant as several of the commenters that have spoken before me, but I did want to address the gentleman who spoke at the very outset of the public commentary. This is not about challenging the audit with the audit. This is about confirming the results. All that we wish is to know that the results that we see are indeed the results. And that is all that we want to see. If there is nothing wrong, then an audit will simply prove that your assumptions are correct and that the results are what we already believe them to be. Thank you very much. Oh, and we still have a few minutes left. So yes, ma'am, go right ahead. Cindy Merrick, Chancellor Township. I'm definitely out of my comfort zone, so you can hear that I'm nervous. Um, I just want to state that I am uh, fully supporting the full forensic audit, mainly for the reasons they all stated. I want to know that it was correct. If it wasn't correct, then we can do legislation to get it correct for the next processes, for the next election, so we can all get comfortable with it. Because I think you can know that there are a lot of people not comfortable with the way we're voting. I, too, have been voting since I was 18. I don't care what kind of election it is. It can be for just local township. I don't care. I vote every single one unless I'm sick. If I'm out of town, I get the required documentation so I can vote. It's very important to me. So it's very important to me to know that it's right. The second thing I want to talk about is the May. I did not, I go down early. I'm there at 7 o'clock in the morning. I like to be one of the first ones voting. However, my son, who works, he couldn't get there till after work. He had to wait an hour. My son is only 27 years old, and he's been voting since he was 18 also. He stood in line. He couldn't vote because there were no ballots. He had to wait. Now, this is a little township in, Ch in Chansford Township, and he's a Republican. He had to wait for a ballot. He waited and waited. He did not get home till after the voting was closed, but he waited so that his vote was in there. We all um, use Sharpies, too. I don't know if that even made our vote count. This is how we feel now. So please, do this forensic audit, not because we want to overturn, just like that gentleman said. We want to know it's right. And you did just fine, too. So you did fine. Um, we probably have time for um, a couple more people. Um, I just, again, oh. Hi, good morning. My name is Lana Bender. I'm from West Manchester Township. Um, I know it's annoying that we're clapping and we're, you know, responding like that. I know you've asked multiple times for that to stop. But I would say this is our way to be in agreement and to make our voices heard right. and to um, let you know that we all, I think we could say by our applause, that we all agree with the full forensic investigation and audit into this um, election. And that's important to let all of the United States know that what was done here was what was really our heart because this is our voice. This is our only voice that we have is to speak through these elections through our vote. That's the only way that we get to choose. And I also just want to let each of you know, you know, hopefully this is not just a job for you. 
you know, coming here today, my prayer is that this is not just a job. And there's a woman in the Bible named Esther. And if you don't know her, you can look her up, Google her. You can read the, there's a whole chapter on her. But, you know, there's moments in time, and I believe that this is one of those moments in time, where you are appointed to this office for such a time as this. We all have a purpose, and we all want to do great things with our life. When we leave this life, we do not want to leave this earth not fulfilling our purpose. And Esther did a great thing for her people, and she stood up in a time when her life could have been demanded of her. Now, that's radical. But I want to say to you guys, this might feel completely radical. It might feel completely like, how can we do this? How can we say this when so many people feel one way and so many people feel another way? But I want to say to you, maybe this is the very reason that you are in this position right now so that you can stand up and do this one great thing. I know you guys are doing a lot of great stuff for York County, but this might be the absolute greatest deposit that you leave for our city when you come out of this position. So I just want to encourage you, you can do this. You can do this for we the people. We are behind you. We are backing you. It might feel like, how can we do this? But you can do this. And like many people said, we are praying for you. We aren't just praying for you, but we're praying for all those in authority over us. We're praying for our entire nation. We want to see great things for the United States of America and for your county. So our prayer is that that is your heart. We will continue to uphold you in prayer. But check out Esther if you don't know who she is. Maybe you're in this position for Ms. this Bender, particular time in this particular minutes. moment. Thank you. We can probably... Um, I, we could probably have time for one more person. So, yes, sir. Good morning. My name is Charles Zambito. I live in Springsbury Township. Um, thank you, commissioners, for taking the time to hear all of us today. And the thing I wanted to say is, you know, there's so many eloquent speakers and I really have nothing to add. But one thing that's really sticking in my mind is please don't let the couple million dollars from the threat of the governor of decertifying our machines stop the way of liberty for us. Because when have you ever heard your constituents say spend more tax dollars, but we'll all agree to pay for those machines if that's what it takes for a veiled threat from the governor. We believe our elections have been compromised. Uh, we're confident of that. And we are a microcosm of your constituents. And again, thank you for your service to us. Uh, but please don't let that stick in a way. Don't let money compromise your integrity. That's all I'm asking. And God bless all of you. All right, I'm going to make one last request again. Uh, we did check the other room just to make sure. Thank you, Tyler, for checking the room uh, that nobody over there wanted to speak. So I, I'm just going to pause for a minute because I do not want anyone to leave feeling like they did, it, did not have an opportunity to speak. Okay. Um, we will close the public comment portion of the meeting. I just, um, before we adjourn and move on to our other business today, really thank you all for coming today. Um, thank you for maintaining professional decorum, and thank you for being courteous um, to the speakers that uh, were speaking. Um, we certainly appreciate uh, your comments. Um, you know, I'll just reiterate uh, what I had said earlier, that um, we have... Uh, voiced our concerns to Senator Mastriano. We are very optimistic he will answer our questions so that um, we can have a further discussion on his request. So again, really, we do appreciate you coming here today. Again, thank you for being professional, um, and we certainly um, enjoyed hearing your comments. So with that, I'm going to pause. So um, Commissioner Smith has just asked if the Board of Commissioners could recess for two minutes. So I'm going to entertain a recess for two minutes, and then we will reconvene our meeting. So we're going to pause here for a minute. Okay. Hey, th I know we were a little bit longer than two minutes. So apologize. Um, so thank you. So we are going to reconvene the Commissioner's meeting. and. Um,
I just wanted to share um, just a very brief statement from uh, the Board of Commissioners. Um, at, at this point, um, it is really too premature for us to make any sort of vote or decision on this. You know, we've been very respectful of Senator Mastriano, and we would really like um, to have our concerns answered by the Senator. We will continue to reach out to his office, um, and we will be collecting additional data. We want to assure you that we've heard your concerns, um, and we will take them um, very seriously. Um, but at this point, um, we are going to um, continue to do what we can to collaborate with Senator Mastriano and get um, the answers to the questions that we have. So again, um, I'll reiterate that we really appreciate your professionalism um, and coming here today and sharing your concerns with us. We really do appreciate it. So with that, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, we are adjourned and we will move on to salary board. <clears throat> Should I go ahead? Okay, I call the salary board of July 21st, 2021 um, to order. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the July 7th, 2021 salary board meeting as submitted. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number two. I make a motion to approve the positions, salaries, hours of work, and fringe benefits as provided by existing collective bargaining agreements or set forth in your county employee handbook or your county policy manual for the following departments and rail offices as stated below with no additional benefits or concessions as otherwise noted as there is listed in the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. If I could have a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjourning signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And I call to order the retirement board of July 21st. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting held on June 16th, 2021 as submitted. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number three. I make a motion to include the following vested individual on the monthly annuity payment list as listed below. Karen M. Krieger, Panrack. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number four. I make a motion to include the following individuals on the monthly annuity payment list as listed below. Cheryl A. Cobb, 911. Donald H. Dipner, Jr., MHIDD, Richard J. Adokarik, Prison, Gail H. Larman, DJ Office Staff. Uh, let me just make sure. Oh, two more. Melissa J. Schaefer, DJ Office Staff, Robert S. Strickhauser, Jr., Prison. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item number five. Make a motion to approve the following employees' buyback of out time in a non pay status while on approved FMLA and medical absence for retirement credit. Justin T. Wirt, an employee of the county, with the following out time periods 6 1 2014 to 8 23 2014, 10 2 2016 to 12 24 2016. 1225-2016 to 1125-2017, employee portion $3,376.32, <coughs> county portion $6,795.66 for a total of $10,171.98. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah. And Greg, just one question. Is this standard operating procedure as far as the buyback yep. for medical leave and it is. FMLA? They don't. A lot of them don't usually do it, but I, I haven't seen it. This particular many person times. Okay. wanted to do it. <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. There were no executive sessions since the last meeting. And, and period seen. of public comments. Okay. If I could have a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. 
Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, we are adjourned. And for those who have been in watching, thanks for um, hanging in with us. It was uh, longer than a uh, normal meeting today. Mm. So have a great day, and uh, please take time to do our community survey. Thank you.